Um, this is uh, the first video associated with the book Statistical Modeling with R that I wrote and was published by Oxford University Press in 2023. The idea of this set of videos is to provide uh, additional knowledge uh, related to the book uh, to uh, facilitate uh, the understanding of its material by, by the readers. These books are, uh, these uh, videos are numbered uh, in order to provide a, chronolo a suggested chronological order for their viewing. Uh, today I'm going to talk, uh, make a sort of general definition of what is statistics and to provide a historical overview of the of statistics. Uh, the second point is because I believe that most textbooks are pretty weak in uh, explaining the origin and the evolution of statistics, uh, focusing on presenting uh, the tests and the methods as a iron-casted set of rules uh, that are devoid of uh, any discussion or controversy. So I think it's a lot better to, to, to have an historical overview, to know, to actually have a, a more thorough understanding of the uh, statistics. So uh, the very first article of the journal uh, Annual Review of Statistics provides seven definitions of this, uh, of this uh, science, if you wish. Uh, of which this is uh, the one that I like best. Um, it says, statistics is the science of learning from data and of measuring, controlling, and communicating uncertainty. Uh, I find it, I find myself uh, a lot more mo motivated by a quote uh, from the preface of Stephen Sen's book, saying that statisticians are engaged in an accelerating uh, an exhausting but exhilarating struggle with the biggest challenge that philosophy makes to science, which is how to translate information into knowledge. Statistics, therefore, contains a set of reproducible procedures that allow to extract reliable information on the basis of observations and experiments from which we estimate parameters of, we will see, <coughs> statistical models. And these par estimated parameters, along with their uncertainty, are uh, guide us to make plausible decisions about the world. Uh, everything, uh, without attempting to, to make a, a, a crash course in epistemology, everything in the Western world started with Aristotle, who defined the conceptual basis of logic that allowed to deduce all valid and true conclusions from a set of axioms or postulates. These axioms or postulates are um, statements about nature or life uh, assumed to be true or known to be true. In this uh, way of uh, deductive way of acquiring knowledge, all true knowledge does not involve any external perception, does not involve any use of the senses, in the sense that it doesn't involve measuring or observing, and is independent of the opinion of the person at in hand. This was challenged to the scientific revolution in the 17th century, where observation and induction, that is, uh, reaching uh, general conclusions on the basis of uh, observing a small set of uh, natural phenomena became fundamental in evaluating the possible truth value of empirical observations. This was actually uh, the problem of induction laid out by David Hume. So uh, at this point in the, in the 17th century, uh, the real causes of observable phenomena passed from being deduced and general as in uh, coming from classical logic and uh, as it was done during the medieval ages to infer an uncertainty, an uncertain. The unavoidable and irreducible uncertainty involved in making inferences about uh, observing the natural world required developing a language to ascertain this plausibility of alternative explanations that this language came to be known as probability. This uh, probability may emerge in the 17th century as a means to act on the uncertainty in dice and card games, a gentleman uh, a pastime. Car, dice and card games are very old, as seen in the Babylonian at the left and Roman dices, with which uh, soldiers gamble away their salaries. And in the card games, also played at the very least during the medieval times, their results, the chance results, receive uh, very marvelous and extraordinary explanations, including <coughs> the, uh, that the fate of the player uh, was related to the favor of the goddess Fortuna here in the sculpture, 
and therefore we did not we, we did not need uh, any uh, formal theory to explain uh, the uncertainty of plausible results of cards and dice games. But the use of probability in inference required many other developments, which I'm going to outline in the coming uh, slides. Statistics, as we know, it emerges from the slow merging of two strands, probability theory developed in the, started to be developed in the 17th century, and the need to describe and synthesize increasing amounts of empirical information that were started to be collected in the late 18th century and more and even more in the 19th century. Probability theory, as we probably all know, was created out of a correspondence between a Parisian, the Parisian mathematician Blaise Pascal and the, uh, and the mathematician and lawyer uh, Pierre Fermat living in Toulouse in, 15, in 1564. Uh, the starting of the, of the correspondence was uh, a question posed in one of the saloons uh, or, uh, that were a place or uh, gathering and having intellectual discussions at the time that attended Pascal and it involved the, how to award, the question of how to award the prize of an, inconclu of an inconclusive wave a game of, of course, uncertain outcome. Out of this correspondence between these two, two mathematicians came, uh, arose a probability theory. Another attendee to Marcens, Father's Marcens Saloon in Paris, this was a, a, a Dutch mathematician and physicist, Christian Huygens. He published the first book on probability, still tricked, a few years later, still strictly devoted to games of chance. Nothing more happened uh, of uh, substance uh, in the development of probability theory until uh, much later. Uh, the next character in this history is the Swiss mathematician Jacques Bernoulli, who published the foundational book on probability theory, in which he defined probability as a real number in the unit interval. He deduced the law of large numbers related to one of the views of probability that we are going to discuss in a second. He introduced two notions of probability, one based on frequency, the frequentist view, and one based on one, well, and the other known as subjective probability. And he made, Bernoulli made the first, numerous applications to applied problems where uh, the decision is uncertain. Uh, he also made the first attempts to estimate probability from uh, empirical observations. These two views of probabilities are the following. The first is what is called the aleatory view, and here probability uh, is the relative frequency of occurrence of an event in a large, potentially infinite number of potential realization of a random experiment. A random experiment is an experiment that, whose outcome we cannot predict with precision before observing the, the, the result of the experiment, the simplest of which is the tossing of a coin. We cannot forecast in advance which side the coin is going to land. So when I say uh, under this view that the probability of heads is one half, is that we expect to obtain heads in about, not exactly, but in about one half of many realization of the same random experiment. So in this view, probability is an objective measurable property of the real world. The second view of probability is, called, is known as the epistemic view. Here, probability measures a personal state of knowledge about the plausibility of occurrence of an event. It measures a degree of belief, or my personal degree of belief, that something may happen. Still, again, uh, uh, as a number, as a real number between in the unit interval. So when I say here that probability of heads uh, of obtaining head equals one half is my own personal belief on the plausibility of a specific result stemming from any source of knowledge, which could be my own personal knowledge, gossips, or some previous observations of the uh, tossing of that coin. So in this view, probability is a personal degree of credence on the occurrence of a given event. These two views of probabilities are both plausible, coherent, and both have a solid and reasonable theoretical underpinnings, and they underlie the two theoretical frameworks uh, coexisting in statistics.
the frequency statist uh, statistics and the Bayesian statistics. Uh, in 1663, uh, uh, Thomas Bayes published his now famous the theorem of rule. It actually was actually published. Pu pu this paper was published posthumously, uh, communicated by Richard Price, a, a personal friend of uh, Bayes, who uh, is suspected to have much improved the papers of his uh, deceased uh, friend. So in this, uh, the base rule simply says that the probability of <coughs> an event A, of an occurring an event A, given that event B has occurred times the probability of occurring event B, equals the probability of occurrence of, occurrence of event B, given that event A has occurred, times the probability of occurrence of event B. This is a non-controversial statement deduced simply from the probabilities of conditional events, these two conditional events, A and B. Uh, Bayes' rule is also known as the law of inverse probability, and this is related to the problem of induction, and therefore it is interesting to know why this is so. So let A be a, a, hypo a hypothesis or cause of an event or, or an effect, and B be the observed effect. So by uh, replacing a, this into the, a, into the base rule, now we have that the probability of, hypoth of a hypothesis being true given that we have, um, we have observed the effect times the probability of observing the effect equals the probability of the effect being observed given that the hypothesis is true times the probability of the hypothesis being true. Uh, so Bayes' rule allows to, cal to calculate the probability that a hypothesis be true, uh, be true given that we have observed a given effect. Uh, so it then becomes uh, an important feature in the process of induction. In the meantime, a German physicist, Achenwald, coined in 1749, many years later, the German word statistic, meaning mathemat the mathematics of the state, which refer ref by, in order to refer to the information of interest into the functioning of states and cities, such as gathering information on the number of births and deaths of prisoners accused and condemned, number of suicides, their age composition, size and size of properties, wakes of harvests, and so on. So, uh, starting in the 19th century, national governments increasingly are uh, started to use this information in management and planning in order to raise and feed armies, in order to uh, calculate taxes, in order to uh, make the, to uh, solve problems of epidemics and so on. Pierre Laplace, uh, an important, one of the most important mathematicians of the 19th century, published in 1812 a book called Theory of Probability, in which he formalized uh, Bernoulli's notion of probability. He deduced the central limit theorem, which we are going to see in coming videos. He used uh, conditional probability, and more importantly, he deduced the way in wh uh, what we call now Bayes' rule in a formal and um, proper way, without knowing that uh, the without without knowledge of the publication, the previous publication of uh, Bayes' paper uh, in the. Uh, in, along the same time, another a famous mathematician, Carl Friedrich, Friedrich Gauss, rediscovered the normal probability, it was uh, deduced in the, in the previous century, and created the first method, one of the first methods of parameter estimation, the method of least squares that we are going to see also in coming videos. <coughs> Two great characters of the 19th century, uh, Alphonse Quetelet, a Belgian, a Belgian astronomer, and Francis Galton, a British physician, epitomized the growing interest in collecting and summarizing empirical information in the 19th century, for which they used, mostly Quetelet, uh, the ideas and methods developed by Gauss and Laplace. Uh, to, to a large extent, the, the 19th century was called the golden age of descriptive statistics. This is when many uh, common features that we use nowadays, such as histograms, means, variances, and so on, were uh, uh, devised in order to summarize the uh, ever-increasing amounts of uh, 
empirical information. Inspired by Galton's strong interest in eugenics, eugenics uh, involved uh, a sort of a social engineering. Uh, Carl Pearson, a British mathematician, began formalizing the relationship between the probability theory and the analytical description of these uh, increasing amounts of empirical information. And this gave rise to the modern mathematical statistics by the end of the 19th century. Uh, Carl Pearson became the first professor of statistics in the world, founded the first department, and uh, founded and maintained the first journal, Biometrica, still published today. An approximate chronology uh, of the, the history of statistics is shown in, this, in the next uh, uh, cartoon, uh, showing the, the uh, with three rows involving uh, the theory of probability uh, uh, of the th two, uh, three events that we already mentioned. I mentioned, I add uh, the important book by John Venn when uh, he uh, uh, from a strong positivist viewpoint, he was uh, um, very interested in developing uh, a frequency based of uh, frequencies based of probability, and uh, a few other books uh, in the 20th century by two British mathematicians, an Italian probabilist and a Russian mathematician, the great Alexei Kolmogorov. Frequency statistics actually arose in the 1920s and 30s out of the monumental work of Ronald Fisher and out of the polemics that Fisher sustained with uh, Jersey Nyman and Egon Pearson in, in, in also in the 1930s. Uh, in the meantime, Bayesian statistics, we can mention the base book, pardon, base paper, sorry, base paper, Laplace's book, the first real book devoted to, uh, to Bayesian statistics was published in 1939. Harold Jeffrey's book. Uh, then in 1953, uh, it was published in an obscure uh, journal of uh, uh, physical chemistry. The an algorithm, this algorithm is called MCMC, we are going to discuss it in a minute, which was rediscovered in the 1990s and this was a game changer for as far as uh, Bayesian statistics is concerned. Up to the 1920s, the overwhelming majority of the data analysis, then based in extremely large sample sizes, had a Bayesian perspective. Every practicing statistician at the time, including Fisher, knew about what we now call Bayesian statistics, which uh, 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 raises the question of what is called classic, class, if classic is uh, the, el the oldest uh, practice, uh, we should call Bayesian statistic classics as opposed to calling frequentist statistics uh, the classic statistics. So the conceptual basis of modern statistics were formulated on the 1920s and 30s, either as new formulations or as a rejection or refinement based off existing methods. Nowadays we have two theoretical frameworks. It is as, as if statistics is a schizophrenic discipline uh, you can, we, we have frequentist statistics and we have Bayesian statistics. Uh, this is explaining these two strands of statistics is the subject matter of these books and of my book and of this set of videos. The main difference, which we are going to uh, discuss later on in coming videos, between these two strands of statistics involve the meaning of probability, the of probability and the use of previous information in data analysis. Ronald Fisher had a pivotal role in the reject rejection of Bayesian methods and in the development, as, as it was mentioned, of frequency statistics that became by far the dominant uh, viewpoint during the, 19th, the 20th century. So as we will see in coming uh, in coming, in coming videos, in full, in full days, this is the basis. This is the basic estimating equation used in uh, Bayesian statistics. At the right, we see the probability of prior, which is the probability that a given parameter has a, a certain set of values. This uh, prior distribution reflects uh, our knowledge about a given parameter before actually seeing the data. At the time. 
at the time of the 1920s and 30s, only certain prior distributions, known as conjugated prior distribution, allow an analytical solution of Bayes' rule. Different, for different set of data, different prior distributions provide different posterior distribution, the outcome of the analysis, and this was thought to be, correctly, as arbitrary, because there are no uh, written or formal rules of how to define priors. For all, all, all other uh, situations in which no analytical solution was feasible, uh, we had to do simulations, which were, of course, impossible in the 1920s and 30s, uh, where, when no, no computers existed. Fisher considered that defining prior distribution was discretional and subjective, which is true, feature of data analysis that had to be eliminated in order to provide an objective and reproducing methods of data analysis. So he devoted an enormous amount of energy to produce a series of landmark papers between the 1920s and 30s <coughs> that fundamentally changed the theory and also the practice of statistics. Regardless of your viewpoint on uh, whether you favor frequentist or Bayesian statistics, Fisher can, see easily, can certainly be called the, the equivalent of Newton in statistics. There is, a, there is statistics before Fisher and there is statistics after Fisher. So in these years, Fisher developed what we now call the sampling distribution along with students. Student was the pen name of a British mathematician, William Silly Gossett that allow inference, making a statistical inference based, based in small to moderate sample sizes, similar to those gathered by scientists in common experiments. He was a forceful proponent of the aleatory or frequentist view of probability, rejecting the epistemic or what we would call Bayesian viewpoint. He developed a universal method for parameter estimation valid for absolutely any probability distribution. This allow also allow, para, uh, besides the parameter estimation, it's allow uh, the, the making of statistical inference. He developed the ideas of the hypothesis test and the p-values as key decision rules on how to make decisions based on the estimated parameters and their uncertainty. And he produced two essential books, uh, here shown in, in the slide, that uh, approach the practice of statistics to uh, non-mathematicians and therefore to scientists that fundamentally change the practice of statistics forever. In 1939, Harold Jeffries, a Cambridge geophysicist of greater uh, importance, published the first book of uh, Bayesian statistics. Uh, he, this book was a uh, review by Fisher and rejected by him in a, in a uh, very harsh book review. Uh, and Bayesian statistics remained used by a small minority of theoretical statisticians in a few departments in the US and the UK until the 1990s. And what, what changed in the 1990s was the rediscovery of the MCMC, the Markov Chain Monte Carlo algorithm that was published by Metropolis et al. in 1953 in the Journal of uh, Physical Chemistry. So what this algorithm did was to release Bayesian statistics from the tyranny of producing, of needing uh, analytical solutions that were only feasible for certain prior distributions and for certain problems. So MCNC, this algorithm, and its many variants, and the increasing availability of computer power are the reasons for the current popularity of Bayesian statistics across the world. Uh, popularity that has increased in the, you know, over the last 30 years and is, uh, can be forecasted to increase in the coming future. So in this video, I have just reviewed, provided an overview of what is statistics and of the historical overview of the discipline. I, I hope uh, you found it interesting and that, you, uh, and that this motivates to, uh, you to see to watch other videos of the same series. Thank you very much.